Hello everybody, it's Dr. Taylor, Undergraduate Exercise Science Program Director and Associate Teaching Professor at the University of Kansas. And welcome again to Fitness Facts. Creatine is one of the most widely used supplements on the market. And I'm frequently asked questions about it. So how does creatine work? And what happens when you supplement with it? Before talking about creatine, we need to discuss bioenergetics, which is a term used to describe the metabolic pathways our cells use to consume or produce energy. Carbohydrates, fats, and proteins are three nutrient fuel sources found in food that we eat daily. These three basic fuel sources, or energy substrates, can be broken down in our cells to release stored energy. The energy contained in the molecular bonds of these energy substrates is chemically released within our cells via different bioenergetic pathways and then stored in the form of the high energy compound known as adenosine triphosphate or simply ATP. An ATP molecule consists of an adenine nitrogenous base, a five carbon sugar known as ribose, and three inorganic phosphate groups. When an ATP molecule is combined with water and the enzyme adenosine triphosphatase, aka ATPase, the last phosphate group splits away from the ATP molecule. This splitting of this phosphate group rapidly releases free energy from the ATP, and this free energy drives many processes in our cells, including DNA and RNA synthesis, intracellular signaling, active transport, nerve impulse propagation, and muscle contraction and relaxation. Think of ATP as the energy currency for our cells. In addition to ATP, our cells contain another high energy phosphate molecule that stores energy. This molecule is called phosphocreatine, or PCR. Unlike ATP, energy released from the breakdown of PCR is not directly used for cellular work. Instead, PCR regenerates ATP to help maintain a relatively constant supply of it in the cell. The release of energy from PCR is catalyzed by the enzyme creatine kinase, which acts to separate an inorganic phosphate group from the PCR molecule. The free inorganic phosphate group can be added to an adenosine diphosphate molecule, also known as ADP, to form ATP. Thus, our cells can prevent ATP depletion by breaking down PCR and providing free inorganic phosphate to reform ATP from ADP. This process occurs rapidly in our cells. During the first few seconds of intense exercise, such as sprinting or weightlifting, ATP is maintained at a relatively constant level, but PCR declines steadily since it is used to replenish ATP levels. At exhaustion, however, both ATP and PCR levels are low and are unable to provide the necessary energy for muscle contraction and relaxation. Therefore, the capacity to maintain ATP levels with the energy from PCR is limited. In combination, ATP and PCR stores can sustain the muscle's energy needs for only 3 to 15 seconds during an all-out effort sprint or resistance training exercise. Beyond that time, muscles have to rely on other processes such as breakdown of carbohydrates, fats, and proteins, to form the ATP that is needed to provide the energy for exercise of longer durations. Now let's talk about creatine, how it's produced within our own bodies and how we can consume it by eating various foods or taking it as a supplement. Approximately one gram of creatine is naturally synthesized in our liver and kidneys each day. In these organs, creatine is produced from the amino acids glycine, arginine, and methionine. Since it is formed from amino acids, creatine is not a steroid as some people falsely believe. Creatine can also be ingested by consuming red meat, chicken, seafood, and pork. 95% of the body's creatine is stored in muscle, and two-thirds of the creatine found in muscle is in the form of PCR. Remember me talking about PCR earlier? By increasing the creatine content of skeletal muscle through creatine supplementation, you can increase PCR levels and this enhances the ATP-PCR energy system by improving the ability to maintain ATP levels during high-intensity exercise. In turn, this improves peak power production during intense exercise like sprinting or weight training and facilitates recovery during rest periods between sets. Creatine also acts as a buffer helping to maintain acid-base balance in your cells. Creatine is an osmotically active substance, so if you increase the levels of free creatine or PCR stored in your muscles, then more water will be drawn into your cells and retained as a result of its osmotic effect. This is not a bad thing though because muscle is 70 to 75% water and a larger volume of intracellular water may help to stimulate increased muscle protein synthesis and hypertrophy. When combined with resistance training, creatine supplementation is associated with greater gains in strength which may be linked to the improved ability to train at higher intensities. 
the increased ability to train at higher intensities and complete more reps and sets during resistance training sessions contributes to improvements in muscle performance and hypertrophy over time. So why supplement with creatine if you eat meat and seafood? Well, beef contains only about one gram of creatine for every one to two pounds of meat, according to Quinnipiac University. You also lose some creatine when meat is cooked. So supplementing with creatine is the most effective way to significantly increase your intramuscular stores of free creatine and PCR without eating pounds of meat. There are many forms of supplemental creatine available, but the form with the most evidence supporting its use is creatine monohydrate. It's recommended that five grams of powdered creatine monohydrate be consumed per day to raise creatine and PCR levels in muscle. Larger, more muscular individuals may require up to 10 grams of creatine monohydrate per day to fully saturate their muscle cells. After approximately 28 consecutive days of creatine consumption, your muscle cells should be fully saturated with creatine, and you can continue taking either five or 10 grams per day indefinitely to maintain muscle saturation. You might wonder what you should mix creatine monohydrate with. Creatine monohydrate can be mixed with water, sports drinks, a post-workout protein shake, or really any other beverage you enjoy drinking. Some evidence has indicated that creatine combined with a large amount of carbohydrate, up to 93 grams of simple sugars, helps to raise insulin and facilitate increased uptake of creatine into your muscle cells. Consuming creatine with 50 grams of protein and 47 grams of carbohydrates in the form of simple sugars has also been shown to increase muscle creatine uptake. That is still a large quantity of sugar to consume at once, and I would not recommend this method of ingestion for those with impaired blood glucose levels, such as diabetics. No matter what you mix creatine with, after about a month of daily consumption, your muscle cells will be full of creatine. So don't worry too much about what to mix it with or when to take it each day. Moving on to safety. Is creatine monohydrate safe to supplement with? The short answer is yes it is. Numerous studies and years of data overwhelmingly demonstrate that when creatine is consumed at recommended daily dosages, it is safe to use. Creatine supplementation is also safe for both males and females and people of all ages including children, adolescents, young adults, and older adults. It was once thought that supplementing with creatine could cause kidney damage and renal dysfunction. However, when ingested at recommended dosages, supplementing with creatine does not cause kidney damage or renal dysfunction in healthy individuals. I recommend reading a 2021 review paper published by Antonio and colleagues titled, Common Questions and Misconceptions About Creatine Supplementation. What does the scientific evidence really show? This paper will help diminish any doubts you may have about the safety of creatine supplementation. I hope you enjoyed this fitness facts video. Thanks again for watching.